Hello everyone and welcome to our video on Doppler effect. Okay, for uh, matric grade 12. Okay, we'll be looking at Doppler effect for this video. Okay, and um, now let's first first things first before we uh, go on into the nitty gritties of any new section. We first thing we do is just have a look at how to define the uh, certain topic that we are dealing with. So, the Doppler effect is the change in the observed frequency of a wave when the source or the detector moves relative to the transmitting medium. Now remember in grade 10 we learned transverse waves, we learned longitudinal waves, we also uh, learned you know how to calculate the velocity and the wavelength of a uh, wave as well and that's what we will be taking some of those factors into consideration for this uh, video and for this section. Now there are two cases that we will be studying in this uh, section. The one is when we have a moving source but a stationary observer and then the next is when we have a moving observer and a stationary source. Uh, one thing to note is that in uh, this section for matric we will only be looking at uh, each case individually and not together. In other words, we won't be looking at a scenario where there is a moving source and a moving observer. It'll either be case one or case two type of scenario. Okay, so um, that's a little, uh, you know, that's good for us, you know, because we'll only be looking at one case uh, per question. We won't, we won't have a question, uh, they won't ask us a question where there is um, a moving observer and a moving source as well. Okay, so uh, as always, there's a formula, all right, for Doppler effect. Now, the formula of Doppler effect is given by FL equals brackets V plus minus VL uh, divided by V plus minus VS, close bracket, times by uh, the free, uh, FS, all right? So let's explain each of the components. So FL is the frequency uh, perceived by the observer or the listener. So L stands for listener, uh, the frequency that is perceived or heard. Then FS is the frequency of the source, all right, the, um, the sound or the frequency that's given off from the source. Uh, v, V alone, just V, is the speed of the waves. All right, or the speed of sound, speed of sound waves, which is normally given by 340 meters per second. That is the average speed of sound that they always give us in the question. Uh, sometimes it is a little bit different, but uh, the question will always uh, state what it is. And then uh, VL is the speed of the listener, and VS is the speed of the sound source. All right, so that is what you are looking at when you see that uh, quite messy formula. It seems a little, uh, seems a little messy, but it actually isn't. It's actually uh, quite simple once we understand the scenario and we are able to narrow, narrow it down just a little bit. All right, wonderful. Now let's go uh, have a look at just a quick note before we have a look at a worked example. All right, over here, we must note that the signs show whether or not the relative uh, motion of the source and observer is towards or away from each other. All right, so if the source moves towards the listener, the uh, velocity or the uh, of the source, the speed of the source, is negative. If the source moves away from the listener, then the speed of the source is positive. All right. Now let's have a look at the the opposite. The listener moves towards the source, then V L is positive, and if the listener moves away from the source, then V L is negative. All right. So before we before we uh, lose ourselves and we think like, oh my gosh, I not I don't understand what all this means. Not to worry. All right. We will have a look at it through a worked example, and then we will uncover, you know, why this is so. Okay. So just going to go over this again. Uh, so when the source 
the sound source moves towards the listener, all right, then that speed will be negative, all right, Vs will be negative. When the sound source moves away from the listener, then it becomes positive, Vs is negative, uh, Vs is positive. When the listener moves towards the source now, then Vl becomes positive. But when the listener moves away from the source, then Vl becomes negative. Okay, so let's have a look at a work, worked example and see how uh, all of this sort of makes sense. In worked example uh, one taken from the Sia Bullet textbook in the chapter six, which is Doppler effect. The question reads, the siren of an ambulance emits a sound with a frequency of 700 hertz. Uh, you are standing on the pavement, okay? So the, immediately we know that this is a case where the sound source is moving because the sound source is the ambulance and it emits a frequency of 700 hertz. And the person, which is us or you, standing, you are standing on the pavement. So you are standing means you are not moving. You don't, you can't move and you can't move like, you know, uh, in terms of distance, you know, when you're standing, I'm sure you can shake your body and whatever, but your feet are not moving. Your feet are still on the same spot, you know, so you are standing still on the pavement. The question goes on to say that if the ambulance drives past you at the speed of 20 meters per second, what frequency will you hear when, question one, A, the ambulance is approaching you, and B, number two, when the ambulance is driving away from you. Take the speed of sound and air to be 340 meters per second, okay? There they give us the speed of sound in air, right? So uh, if we had to answer this question ourselves, we just write down, okay, uh, what do we know? We know they gave us in the question that FS, all right? Now this is equal to the ambulance in the question. Right now, the ambulance, and this is given to uh, to us by 700 hertz. Okay, they told us that we were standing still. Right, so we were just standing. Okay, so we know this is zero meters per second because we're not moving. What else did they tell us? They told us that the speed of the sound source, or the speed of the ambulance, again. All right, the speed of the ambulance was 20 meters per second. All right. And uh, then they also told us in the question, oh, that the speed of sound was 340 meters per second, speed of sound in air. All right. So in step one, obviously, we have just done that. We analyze what has been uh, given to us in the question and we write it down. We can see that all the values are in the correct SI units. So we can move straight on to step two and determine uh, how to approach the problem. So uh, we know that we are looking for the observed frequency with a moving source, all right, and a stationary l listener, all right. So the change in frequency can be calculated by the Doppler effect formula, which they've given to us there. And then they have also written down, okay, the information, all right. Now, notice there, Vs is negative 20 for A because it is negative 20 meters per second because the ambulance is moving towards the listener in question A. In question B, it is the ambulance is now moving away from you. It's driven past you. So therefore, the speed of Vs is 20 meters per second, positive. All right. So we're working out two different uh, frequencies here of the moving source. All right. So in step three, determine the frequency of the listener, right? When the ambulance is approaching. Now this is for A. All right. We can see that the signs though, pay attention to the signs though. All right. So, all right. We can see that for the signs there, all right. Um, in the first line, they've given the normal, a full Doppler effect equation, but we know that uh, for A, Okay, because uh, we know that for A, I'm going to just uh, simplify the formula for us. All right, so for A, the formula will read as follows. FL is equal to 
v, all right, because vL was 0 meters per second, so it's v, all right, all over v plus, no, v minus vs times fs. That's for a, and for b, fl is still given by v, all right, because vL was 0, all right, v plus vs times f of s. All right, so that is the simplified formula. Okay, perfect. All right, so we sub in our values. fl is equal to 340 plus 0 over 340 minus 20 times 700. All right, and we get an answer of 743,75 hertz when the ambulance is approaching the uh, listener. All right. And uh, then for step four, uh, now determine FL when the ambulance has passed. All right, we get an a uh, FL is equal to 340 plus zero divided by 340 plus 20 times 700. That gives us an answer of seven of 661 comma 11 hertz. All right. So we can see the frequency is greater for when the ambulance is approaching compared to where the ambulance has driven past the listener. All right. So let's quote the final answer. When the ambulance is approaching you, you hear a frequency of 743,75 hertz. And when it's going away, going away from you, you hear a frequency of 661,11 hertz. So it's clear to say that when you are stationary and the sound source is approaching you, you hear a much louder or higher frequency, all right? A greater frequency when the sound source is approaching you. Uh, as opposed to when the sound source is moving away from you, you hear the same sound, but at a much lower frequency.